Ring ding dong. Ring ding Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo Tom. And check this out. I went to NXT Live. That's pretty cool. Standing room only, but I got a chair. I think they, I think they had like a very limited number of chairs. And actually had more chairs than I think they knew what to do with. So they're just like, yeah, we'll just, whatever. So yeah, that, that, was, that was one of the nice surprises. Um, yeah, one of the other surprises, guess what it was. When I rock the spot, put the flavor I got. I get plenty of ass, so call me an astronaut. Yeah, there was a lot of women wrestling going on tonight. I'm fine with that. I was I was actually amazed with it. Because I think three things stood out. One, for some reason, the NXT house show, with the exception, I think, of only one match, and I think that, and I'll get to that, I think that was a practice match for the main show, the house show seemed better than the TV show. Two, there were a lot of women wrestling. And three, those women, they were women. They were not, like Jim Cornette would say, oh, the girls are wrestling. No, they're women. Core Jade looked a lot more grown up and woman-like. And live than she does, than she does on TV. And I'll tell you what, Nikita Lyons, she's all woman. But yeah. So let's get, let's get to this. Um, first of all, I guess I'll give my opening kind of thoughts because I do have my notes here. I was a very good, dedicated note-taking person. And also, you're gonna see the entrances. And. Maybe a minute or so of each of the matches. I think I did. I think I took like a couple 30 second clips of each match every so often. So, yeah. Uh, the only thing that I think was much different than the house shows of the past is that there was no meet and greet. Now, you could make an argument saying, yeah, we still have this COVID thing going on. I got to fist bump a wrestler, though. I said, I said hey, hey, hey Miss, Mr. Williams, Mr. Trick Williams, can, can my friend get a, get a picture with you? And he was totally cool with it, too. And I'm like, oh, thanks, man. And he fist bumped me. I don't know. Again, you don't have the masses kind of going up there and sneezing on people. So, who knows? Maybe if they did it like mask was required for meet and greets, that'd be kind of that'd be kind of cool. Actually, I don't know if that'd be cool or not. They could lie to me. Who knows? Yeah, there was no meet and greet. I know we're just getting off the COVID nineteen stuff. I was looking forward to that more so for my friend versus myself, because because when you've been to NXT, I'll I'll tell you what, if Nikita Lines was at the meet and greet. That would have been cool. I do like the fact that they announced... Oh, I was, I was in the fourth row, too. Getting fourth row seats for like 12 and a quarter is generally unheard of. That's actually really good. I also think NXT is definitely the middle ground between WWE and AEW. NXT is a totally different crowd, especially the house show experience. The performers still work... For the most part, a WWE style, but put their own little flair on it, where it's not like totally random, move, 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 move forever. There is some selling this, there is some storytelling going on, 
but it's definitely not the very regimented WWE style. And it's not the willy nilliness of AEW. Uh, that, and I actually did like the fact that the announcer came out, said, I'd like to thank you guys for being here. We're finally back on tour. Did all the kind of, all, all the other hype up stuff. He announced who was going to be there. And when I heard who was going to be there wrestling, I was absolutely shocked and floored. The Creed, all the champions were there. Since when in an NXT house show do all the champions wrestle? The Creed brothers were there. I'll tell you what, they had... They had the... Best match that I appreciated the most. And I'll, and I'll get more into that later. But the Creed brothers were there. Toxic Attraction, all three were there. Mandy Rose doesn't have to be there, okay? I mean, Mandy Rose is a little bit above doing the house show, house show circuit. Unless they thought she was really that bad in the main roster. I don't know. But yeah. Um, Braun Breaker was there. Cameron Grimes. They announced what the main event was. Braun Breaker versus Cameron Grimes. To the moon. That was pretty cool. Um, Carmelo Hayes was there. Whoa. I think Carmelo Hayes was there because Trick Williams wrestled. So let me triple check my notes really quickly. Yeah, it was. Yeah. He was there. He had his belt and he was ringside. So yeah, that definitely counts. It's only one ham sandwich match. That's good. One flaming yawn match. That was amazing. So yeah. So here's a little bit of the preview, what the announcer did beforehand. And before I show the rest of this content, unfortunately, I think I have to put this up. Only <laughs> because, well, during all the women's stuff, you'll see, you might see a lot too. I saw tattoos. I didn't know they had tattoos. Indeed. And I'll start off with Casey and Katana. I forget what her last what her new last name is. Um, taking on Cora Jane and Roxanne Perez. I'll tell you what, Roxanne Perez looks more like a woman live than she does. She looked taller than Cora Jane, or is it just me? Or are they just all so <laughs> it could be the fact that they're all so short. She's the tallest one.
I'll tell you what, this was a great high energy match. What an ass at they are to the company. Yeah, that's the right word for it. I think. Indeed. But yeah, I mean, great and great high energy moves. Good double teams by everyone. Um, Cora and Roxanne did that. K, uh, K and K did that as well. And that stretch right at the ring post. That was good. Great rope running. Casey and Katana, they are now full-fledged heels. Even, yeah, they just look like full-fledged heels. Again, check this stuff out. Again, the, this match flowed so well. This was a fun match. This actually, this match actually got the crowd all pumped and excited for the rest of the show. Sometimes they have an opening match. And guess what happens to the rest of the show? This match was up there. This got the fans excited. Faces won. Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez win. I'll tell you what, I was absolutely shocked. I'm like, whoa. Could this, I think this is a little precursor, or maybe more so a practice match leading up to when they do their three-way and they're saying, hey, let's feel things out, let's see how things go. Which is totally legit. I mean, you'd rather have a bored house crowd than have bad rating numbers, I guess. I guess so. But I'll tell you what, folks, this was a surf and turf match. Then we go on to the next match. So this was Wesley. Oh, I was shocked to see him here, actually. Well, I don't know. I think he might live in Orlando, so it's not like Jacksonville. Uh, hour that way. Hour. Two and a half hours, that's not too bad. Versus Trick Williams.
That was, again, a good heel face dynamic. You knew very simply who to cheer for. You knew exactly who to boo. The crowd wants to be... It sounds bad, but the crowd wants to be led a bit. The crowd doesn't want to make up its own decision. Well, who's this? Is, it, is he face? Is he heel? Is he heel? Is he face? When the crowd can't tell what to do, the crowd will get bored very quickly. I've seen it happen. But I'll tell you what. Once you know what the heel face dynamic is, and of course then you have Carmelo Hayes on the outside taunting the crowd, that was great. Uh, Chuck Williams, that big... Be on to Wesley. Again, Wesley's so great at selling. Doing all the aerial selling. There is something, I think, to getting experienced indie wrestlers or experienced wrestlers, say, from like an Impact Wrestling that have started off in Impact. They know how to sell. Because they know if you're in Impact Wrestling, you can't, you kind of have to know what you're doing. But if you want to make the other guy look good, and therefore he'll make you look good, you really have to sell for him. And I'll tell you what, Wesley learned that. He learned that lesson. Some wrestlers don't learn that lesson. And that's when they stay in the impact for a longer, or when they move on to WWE, everyone's like, they suck. But Wesley, I mean, he probably did get the short end of the stick with uh, what happened with him and his partner and his partner's wife, or girlfriend, or my princess! Kimberly. Yeah. I mean, they showed great timing. The rope work was great. It was quick. Everything was crisp. Again, good heel work on the outside of the ring when they went to the outside of the ring. finishes were really believable and then the trash talking by trick trick williams has learned so much in this very short time you've actually seen him wrestle i'm impressed trick williams you're getting the clap from the home well, you're not getting the clap that would be bad and i don't want to give you that, that sounds disgusting yeah i shall clap and cheer for you even though i shall boo your good heel work uh, Wesley again did the good turtle stomp and I, I'll tell you what he did like a near spinal tap oh the spinal tap is so pretty but it is such a career shortener just ask AJ Styles about that I think he's in this I don't think I've seen him do a spinal tap yet or actually no I think he did I don't want to say yet I think he's done it once because I saw it and I commented, I'm like, oh my god, that's a spinal tap. And people are like, that was a spinal tap. He did it once. I want to say it was at either WrestleMania or SummerSlam. And I want to say, I'm 70% sure it was against John Cena. If you're going to bust out the spinal tap, John Cena at uh, SummerSlam... That, that's a big thing. I mean, AJ Styles is so good. And I'll just say my AJ Styles rant. He has four moves that are finishers. 
Phenomenal form, Calf Crusher, Styles Clash, and if you're a big enough opponent on a big enough stage, he will every once in a while dip into that big bag of tricks and hit that Spinal Tap. Again, John Cena was probably worth a Spinal Tap at SummerSlam, one of the marquee shows. But seeing uh, Wes Lee do a near Spinal Tap, that was great. I'll tell you what, I applaud both guys. Surf and Turf match. Well, we got some talking done. Um, Greg Grace and the Walla comes out. Um, my friend <laughs> Grace and Walla had the line. I said, "Oh my goodness, this is gonna set her off." Um, I guess she yelled something. He's like, "Yeah, you suck. You're a loser," or whatever she said. He's like, "You sit down. I only go for number tens, and you're a two. Oh, he did not just say that. I think I got that on film. I'm honestly not sure. some of his talking I'll tell you what Grayson Waller is the best talking heel I've heard in a while I didn't like him because I thought he was just an annoying prick but I'll tell you what he's turned that annoying prick into being an annoying prick heel and that's really good and he was drunk with a few other people but yeah that was hilarious oh my goodness I'm like oh he just did not um and then Tiffany Stratton comes out Tiffany Stratton looks like Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> She talks a little bit. Then we have Tiffany Stratton. I think I think I got her name here. No, I have no idea who. I have no idea who, no, no idea who she was. If you on the YouTube Galaxy know this one woman that comes in in a white tank top bra thing. With blue thong panties. I should know that. Yeah. Go, man. I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to butcher her name. Yeah, so those two square off at Tiffany Stratton versus What's Her Face. For the most part, it wasn't 
bad. It wasn't bad, and I'm gonna get downgraded now. Now that I really do think about this match, because really, just taking my notes, the one thing, the one thing I put down, even though it was kind of all, all the very basic action. Not my pen. Oh, there we go. I mean, for the most part, it was just doing like a bunch of cartwheels and handstands. So yeah, that was really about it. Um, yeah, Grayson Waller then. And Solo Sokoa comes out. That was pretty cool. So then they said, you know what? Since since we've had this match and I'm not done with her yet, you want him. I think Tiffany Stratton won by like cheap shot roll up or something, something cheap. And for the most part, that Tiffany Stratton match versus What's Your Face, I don't know. It's a ham sandwich. Then Solo Sokoa comes out. Solo Sokoa looks absolutely amazing. Uh, Grayson Waller. So then he says, You know what? I'm not. The one girl says, I'm not done yet, whatever her name is. Uh, so then we have a mixed tag match, which I thought was amazing. I just like to look at Tiffany Stratton's ass. I, I'll, I'll say that without shame, ever. Um, so it's Grayson, Grayson Walla and Tiffany Stratton taking on Silicico and What's-Her-Face. I mean, Solo Sokoa looks like his brothers. There's something I can say. This was a, there was a fun chase around the ring. Um, classic heel tactics. That was pretty good. I'll tell you what, Grayson Waller, great heel, great, uh, great heel talker, kind of growing on me. That's a good thing for NXT, the fact that they're growing, or they're having, I don't know if he's wrestling in the indie, indie scene, but the fact that they're having these homegrown talents, 
and you can actually see them develop. It's really promising because parts of WWE are getting kind of old. I'm not saying Grayson Waller is made of this by any stretch of the imagination ready for a call up yet. But it is good to see that they're developing again. Solo Sokoa could join the Usos like yesterday. So that's not too bad. Um, again, Solo Sokoa looks like his brothers again. I'll give this to Grayson. He's a good heel talker and he's great at taunting the crowd. Um, then there was the. Then the. Uh, uh, What's her face actually slammed Grayson Waller. That got a huge pop. Um, Solo Sokoa then finishes off Grayson Waller. Solo Sokoa and What's Her Face win. I can accept that. That was pretty good. Cheeseburger match. Then we had Lash Legend come out and do a promo. Um, she just gets booed through the entire thing. No one cares. They probably said, yeah, we better send out Alba Fire. Kaylee Ray. We need Kaylee Ray. And they just kind of like yap a little. This match is getting its entirely new segment because I didn't want to. I think my video recorder has about a solid 30 minutes and then it cuts out. It was free, what can I say? But this match, this was Diamond Mind, this was Diamond Mind Divided. You had the Creed Brothers with Ivy Niles holding the titles, taking on Roderick Strong and Damon Kemp.
And I'll tell you what. To me, this was the ma the match of all matches. If you want to see a good face, kind of face versus face wrestling match, something that really harkens back to the technical collegiate folk style freestyle Greco-Roman ways of, of pro wrestling. This is watch the first five minutes of this. Or catch a, a catch. Damon Kemp versus either of the Creed brothers. I thought they were back on a college mat. Single leg reversal. Granby roll. Fireman's carry. I think it was a solid five minutes before they actually did any like pro wrestling moves. It was all collegiate, and I said, "Oh my goodness, this was a technical masterpiece." I really haven't seen any of this probably until you go back. I think you have to go back to Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle in their prime. When they probably agreed to say, yeah, let's do like two, three minutes collegiate rules. See what happens. We'll tell the ref. It's like, hey, ref, it's going to be a two-minute collegiate shoot. I was like, what's the ref going to say to Brock and Kurt? Um, also, I want to say it was Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. Technical mastery of one of their matches was, you're just like, oh wow, that's actual real wrestling. And that's what people were saying. They're like, oh wow, this is real. But it's, it's not, again, they could have told the ref, it's like, like hey ref, we, we just want to see for bragging rights backstage. I have, I, have, I have a cheesecake writing on this ref. We're going like five minutes collegiate style. Ref's like, well, okay, guys. And he said, hey, Roger, you know you have 20. You're only going to have 15 minutes after this. Roger Strong's play, like, whatever. I just want to get back to my wife. But I'll get into that later. But, yeah, this was technical collegiate mastery. Oh, wow. It was so good. Um... Again, the crowd was actually... The crowd was just clapping. Like, move after move. And, and they stopped and they paused. And the crowd was like... That was real wrestling. Again, the crowd... If you have a good crowd, they will appreciate a really good technical match. Um, Roderick Strong, when he got in, he's still Roderick Strong. Undisputed. Era Roderick Strong. Unfortunately, his buddies and his wife are over in AEW right now. But again, Kemp, great presentation of the knee drop. Walked him in the middle of the ring so everyone can see it. Suplex, very Greco-Roman like. Again, this crowd appreciated some of the technical aspects of the match. Other crowds might not. Other crowds would be like, "Yeah, whatever." Probably Daytona Beach. I don't know. Daytona Beach is an odd crowd. If it, if you're putting on a great match, they will they will cheer the heck. If if they're like, "Who the hell are these two jabronis?" and why are they screwing everything up? Yeah, they'll leave at the intermission part. 
Um, Roderick Strong, again, he can work with crowds so well. He was young with the one guy. Uh, but one Creed gets a hot tag. Uh, Roderick gets bounced out of the ring. That was so good. I mean, such a good technical match. If you're going to have a face versus face match, uh, that, that a competition for, for a cheesecake to see who's the best in the faction is, I'll tell you what, this was a filet mignon match. Then we get to the next match. Zion Quinn. Why did I put Zion Lee? No. Yeah, Zion Quinn versus Giovanni Vinici. Oh, yeah. By the way, the Creed Brothers won. My, that, hey, win or lose, that was such a good match. I didn't care who won or lost. That was just amazing. Uh, next match again was Zion Quinn versus uh, Giovanni Vinici, Fabian Eichner. Just with a beard. Again, great technical match. If you're going to... if The thing is, you don't want NXT to just be a new Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is its own little niche thing. Technical wrestling is great, trust me. There has to be room for a, a good old-fashioned slug it up brawl. It has to be for a good pro wrestling match. So you have to incorporate all those things. Beginning of the show, classic wrestling matches. Middle of the show, okay, talking a little bit more brawling. Mi um, kind of right there at the break, right before the break. Amazing technical match. This had a little bit more aspects of a pro wrestling match. It just did not feel like a plug-and-play WWE style match. Maybe there is something to, to Triple H coming back to NXT, to, um, NXT. But again, Zion Lee versus Giovanni Vinici. About this match that feel like a test TV match. I can see these two having a TV match. I'll tell you what, I good headlock takedowns, good shoulder tackles, classic stuff.
Then you get the stomps. You always have to have stomps. Stomps are good. Uh, again, Vin uh, Vinici, a good crucifix, crucifix bomb of his. Great rolling Simone drop. And he has such a nice sit out razor's edge. That looked pretty. Giovanni Vinici won. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. It was a solid cheeseburger match. And then now, at the end, you start to get a little bit of the Latin. I don't know if it's at the end of the night with the people involved, but you had Indy Harwell, Nikita Lyons, and, and Wendy Chu taking on Toxic Attraction. you guess which one Wendy Chu but yeah 
when you choose gimmick is unfortunately what its namesake is, is it's a gimmick and gimmicks do have the role but if you're going to be so narrowly defined by your gimmick there's very little wiggle room on either side like Nikita Lyons she's a she's a kickbox she's a kickboxer so again but she knows pro wrestling and she has some some verbal chops and can do a lot and, and her ass is, is like this oh no yeah but but she has that wide wide range of stuff in her gimmick she, she's a kickbox she's she's that trained kickboxer knows her knows her stuff does her strikes does her pro wrestling when need you the sleepy girl sleepy girl gimmick kickboxer gimmick sleepy girl gimmick bad nasty girl gimmick sleepy girl gimmick Aussie gimmick so yeah <laughs> Aussie gimmick yeah so again one of these three are just not like the other Again, all of it's real looking. Yeah, I I was for some reason I don't know why. Nikita Lyons' posterior got into a lot of these videos, but yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a reason I gave this a rated R rating. That shouldn't be viewed by anyone, including people who watch way too much YouTube. Unless you watch way too much YouTube wrestling videos. That's going to be such a goofy thing I'm going to put in. I still have to... Jeez, this is going to take forever. This is happening, I don't know, Sunday, hopefully. And, and you know what? Monday, I'll get to AEW because AEW suck compared to this. And Forbidden Door is, is, is not going to be as good as this NXT live show. No, they're definitely not going to have all that ass. Oh! Can't believe I said that. But um, let's see here. Again, one of these is definitely not like the other. Um, toxic Attraction, Good Double Teams. The key, I, again, I could tell that Nikita Lines has a hip tattoo. Thank you. Gigi Allen, oh my goodness. Again, the hair pulling by Gigi Allen. And I can see the front of Gigi Allen's butt cheeks. Don't want to ask me how. I saw it though. And you would have seen it too. Uh, Wendy Chu kind of takes most of the match off. She kind of hangs on the outside. Yeah, she's like the least, or takes most of the offense actually, which is good. No one wants. No one really wants the pictures of her flat ass. I guess, especially in you know, the onesies. Onesies are not necessarily the most flattering thing, especially if it's a sleepy onesies that like a five-year-old or a ten-year-old grade schooler might wear, like in Minnesota or someplace. So yeah, um, Indy. Again, starts with a comeback that's so good. Gigi has an amazing has an amazing front ass. Yeah, don't even ask how I know that because that would probably not be good. Although it is it is pretty obvious, especially by the outfit that she wears. Yeah, and there is such a thing as I guess front ass cheek. I just learned that this show. It's probably terrible. Where was I? Oh yeah, let's let's just get to some action.
came in a little bit more. Um, and then Nikita. Yeah. It, it, was, it was kind of a showcase of toxic attraction. Um, you kind of knew they were going to win. Although Mandy Rose had. She's like spine bustered everyone. She, she's developing that good Arn Anderson spine buster too. I can appreciate a good spine buster. Um. And then Nikita's top. Jeez. Nikita's top kept on like creeping up. I could see the little lashes that, that held said brazier in place. Those things burst. We're going to see all of Nikita Lions. I'll tell you what. Nikita Lions is just one bad stitch away from having the most mean wardrobe malfunction ever. And I mean more so than... Than the cross ripping of Sasha Bosch's pants. The multiple exposures of nipplage between the flares and the uh, between Charlotte Flair and the Bellas. I mean, this would be on epic proportions. Um, Toxic Attraction did win at the very end. I'll tell you what, it was okay for what it was for what it was. And with those and with at least five of the six competitors involved, ham sandwich match. So Kiryu was actually pretty cool. Even though I caught them on the corner of my eye wandering around probably a little bit too much, especially at the end. More so, I don't think they wanted anyone to videotape. Well, potentially was going to be the test match for this match. It was a NXT title match of... Cameron Grimes to the moon. The thing is, Cameron Grimes has to do that a little bit more naturally. I think the people at Jacksonville are like, okay, we're, we're spent. We're emotionally spent from all the other matches. We just witnessed a technical masterpiece in uh, Diamond Mind fighting themselves. We just saw all the floozies, minus one, go at each other. We're just like, ah. Oh. So then we had Brock, Brock uh, Braun Breaker, Rex Steiner, taking on Cameron Grimes. Again, Jim Cornette says this. These two guys look like beasts. Braun Breaker looks... Braun Breaker is a perfect mix. A perfect cross between Rick and Scott Steiner. Uh, just genetically freakish. Um, although being from Georgia hurts him, he should have been from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Minor quibble on my point. Ann Arbor's better. M go blue. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
Um, this seemed like a practice match for the live event. So, you know what? Spoiler alert. Man, I gotta do a lot of work for this one video. Fudge. I hope I don't have that threesome tomorrow. Oh, no one heard anything. Trust me. Cool. The Mexican tidal wave, baby. Yeah. Where was I? Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Braun. Again. Forces the day of the test of strength. Forces Cameron Grimes into the corner. Clean break. Grimes does the same thing. Forces Braun Breaker into the corner. Clean break. Um, pretty good technical match. Um, it is kind of fun to watch. <laughs> the rest are speaking from the backstage area. They really want to see this. And every so often you see the little curtain open. It'd be like... So that was kind of cool. Again, when you're paying attention to more of what other wrestlers are doing, it just... This just felt like a test match of what was going to... What we would... Of the final product that should come out on TV. And they've done that before a couple times in NXT. So enjoy some of this. Again, spoiler alert. Cameron Grimes can't re reverse the delayed vertical suplex by Braun Breaker. Grimes has a good Huracrana. You know what? Braun Breaker doesn't have... Braun Breaker's Huracrana isn't too shabby either. Uh, again, good good shoulder selling after his shoulder's hurt. Um, Grimes then proceeds to work on the shoulder and the whole arm. That vicious double cross body. The whole audience went, ooh, on that one. It just looked real and awkward. Um... The weird thing is, is that Braun Breaker, a little bit more back and forth, Cameron Grimes can never get the um, cave-in on him. Braun Breaker knew what was coming. Braun Breaker used a spear and finished off Cameron Grimes. To the moon! Well, to back to Orlando, or wherever, or South or Carolina, I don't know. I have stuff to do. And the, uh, uh, that match itself... Cheeseburger match. Cheeseburger 
Again, I'd like to applaud NXT for going back on its life, for going back to a live schedule. That was absolutely amazing and fun to watch. It's such a treat because it is so much better than some of the live stuff that I have been seeing. And the live stuff that I have been seeing actually just kind of look like a lot precursor to a live show. Which is not necessarily... Where did I put that bill at? Not necessarily what you want to see. Especially if you're paying about a certain price for it. Although granted getting into the performance center is free. You have to pay for this. But this was just more exciting. Overall, I'll tell you what, this was a surf and turf show. Again, the highlight, my friend got, even though I really had to push her, I'm like, listen. She's like, oh yeah, I didn't get to, I only got to hand slap one person. That happens. Heels aren't going to hand slap you. And they're going the wrong way, and from where she was, she was right next to the bell table. Yeah, that's kind of a distance. I kind of had to push her. I'm like, hey, listen, that's Trick Williams. You've been complaining all the time that you've never gotten a picture with a pro wrestler. We're going to get you a picture with a pro wrestler. Again, Trick Williams, thank you very much. Perfect gentleman wrestler. He knows that he knows the fans are there supporting him. Um, he gave back a little bit. Fist bumped me. That's all I needed. I've had my picture taken. I want my picture taken with with both arms around well, one arm around the lower part of Nikita Lions and the my other arm around the upper part of Nikita Lions. And then security can can very easily just say, Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And I'll leave with a smile on my face. Or my hands so far down what she would call her trunks. But yeah. Uh, King Arthur could not pull it out. There's a K Hart reference for you too. Okay, Hart, a little shout out to you out there. But other than that, a really fun show. You know what? This is good. Um, my closing remarks. Going to an NXT live show makes me want to go see another NXT live show. And that's what it should do. Last time I saw an AEW live show, I'm like, screw this. I don't want to see this live anymore. The stadium is garbage. It's falling apart. It leaks. These fans are complete jerkwads. Um, the wrestling is minus the one bloody bloody woman match, which which was kind of a turnoff for some reason. But yeah, other than that, the matches were meh. Um, with the exception of CM Punk coming out doing a promo. And there's no CM Punk. And there will be no CM Punk for a while. So, why bother going? Why why should I spend 30 bucks, say 30 on me, 60, parking was free, food was ridiculous. Why should I spend 100 bucks for two people to go to a wrestling event when I could spend pizza, sodas, 25 when I can spend 50 bucks, when I can literally spend half the amount and have triple the enjoyment. The arena for the most, um, the armory, clean. It's what I expected an armory to look like. Very basic, very basic setup. I'm fine with that. Um, when they come back here to Daytona Beach, you can bet I'll be the first one to buy tickets for that. So yeah, I might even get front row tickets and say, hey, I will call up... Um, Maybe I'll email some people. Uh, I don't know. Wait. I have to think about that. Who else could I bring? Yeah, no, I have friends. I'm just joshing people. Somewhat. It's a short list. But yeah. I want to go see NXT Live again. Not necessarily go out to Orlando. But if they come here to Daytona Beach and 12 bucks. Oh, hell yeah. I would do that. Um, again, it also makes me say, you know what? Maybe WWE is going to step up his game since Vince is going through all this. Maybe it would be worth going to see SmackDown in Orlando. And then two days later, spend 20 bucks, 20, 40, 
yeah, spend about forty dollars, make make a nice Friday of it. Go see SmackDown. Uh, drop another forty or fifty, depending on family. Jeez, depending on if my uh, my sister and, and and all her minions or kid. I shouldn't call them minions. Her children, my nieces and nephews, want to go see that. That's a whole other issue. Take her to that. Oh, I could do that too. But yeah. It makes... Seeing this NXT makes me want to watch more pro wrestling. And for a short time, for a kind of short time, I'm, I'm like... I'm getting burned out on pro wrestling. This NXT invigorated me. Oh, 